Just what is the difference between traditional costing and activity-based costing? Previously, in order to determine the cost of a product in a job order cost system, we used what's called a traditional costing system. We know that the cost of a product is more accurate when the costs incurred can be directly traced to the product's production. And we know that direct material and direct labor costs are both traced directly to the product. This ensures accuracy because it traces the resources consumed directly to the product's costs. However, overhead costs are indirect costs of the manufacturing process. In order to apply manufacturing overhead to the cost of a product, we use the predetermined overhead rate, calculated at the start of the year. The predetermined overhead rate, also called a single rate or plant-wide overhead rate, is calculated as the estimated annual overhead costs divided by the estimated annual activity base. By multiplying the predetermined overhead rate by the actual cost driver used in the production of a product, such as direct labor hours or machine hours, we can allocate a portion of the manufacturing overhead to each product. This costing system, where we directly trace direct materials and direct labor to the product, but we apply manufacturing overhead using a single overhead rate, is called the traditional costing system. There are benefits and drawbacks of every costing system. We already demonstrated the traditional costing system in our series on job order costing, but let's do an additional example just to refresh our memory. We'll demonstrate the traditional costing system using an example from Julian Inc. Julian Inc. manufactures mining equipment, which they custom build to the customer's specification in their automated plant located in British Columbia. The company estimates that they will incur $864,000 of manufacturing overhead over the period. Currently, the company is using a traditional costing system and applies overhead using a predetermined overhead rate, which is based on estimated direct labor hours of 100,000 hours. The company is bidding on job 480. Estimates for the proposed job are as follows. Direct material, 44,000. Direct labor, 36,000. And total direct labor hours of 2,400 hours. The company is bidding on a job and they need to estimate the total cost of the job because they need to provide a quote to the customer. Since we're using the traditional costing system, let's start by calculating the predetermined overhead rate, also called the plant-wide rate. Remember the formula for the plant-wide rate is estimated annual manufacturing overhead divided by estimated annual activity base. The estimated annual manufacturing overhead for Julian Inc. is 864,000. The company uses direct labor hours as their activity, 100,000 hours. $864,000 divided by 100,000 hours is equal to $8.64 per direct labor hour. This is the predetermined overhead rate, also called the plant-wide rate. We can now use this and apply it to job 480. The company estimates that a total of 2,400 direct labor hours will be used in producing this job. So we can use this information to calculate the allocation of manufacturing overhead. The predetermined overhead rate of $8.64 per direct labor hour multiplied by 2,400 direct labor hours equals $20,736. This is the estimate of how much overhead will be consumed when producing job 480. What is the total estimated cost of job 480? Direct materials of $44,000 plus direct labor of $36,000 Remember, both costs directly traced to the job. And then we add in the applied manufacturing overhead of 20736 which is allocated or applied to the job using the plant-wide overhead rate. The total is $100,736. The company would take this total, apply a markup, and then determine the selling price to the customer so that they can provide them with a final quote on the job. This sounds very straightforward. The problem? Management at Julian has expressed some concerns. Although the company is constantly winning new jobs and their production facilities are close to capacity, 
their profitability has been declining. Higher sales should mean higher profits, but that's not what they're experiencing. Their profits are decreasing. Why? It may be that the traditional costing system is no longer meeting their needs. In highly automated factories, the highest cost category may be manufacturing overhead. Allocating such a large component of their product costs using a single plant-wide rate may no longer be appropriate. In the past, Julian has used direct labor hours to determine the plant-wide application rate. However, Julian has automated their factory and this may mean that the direct labor hours they have used to calculate their predetermined overhead rate is no longer appropriately allocating manufacturing overhead. Also, as the total overhead amount increases due to higher factory costs of automation, they need to recognize that one activity base most likely does not relate to all the costs within the cost pool. Direct labor hours in an automated factory cannot be causing all of these overhead costs to change. Remember, the activity base is chosen because it relates to the cost in the cost pool. It causes those costs to change. When the cost pool is so large and many different activities are accumulated into the one cost pool, it's possible that one activity base is no longer enough. We know that when the manufacturing process is simple and one activity base appropriately reflects the costs in the manufacturing cost pool, then the traditional costing system works well. It appropriately allocates manufacturing overhead to the cost of each individual product. However, we also know that manufacturing has experienced huge changes in the advances in computerized system, technological innovation, global competition, and automation. Many different activities are now required to manufacture today's products. One plant-wide rate is unlikely to appropriately allocate manufacturing overhead to the products being produced today. We know that using the wrong application rate can have serious implications such as over or under costing and therefore over or under pricing and this can have serious consequences with regards to the company's ability to survive and thrive. There is an alternative to the traditional costing system. Companies can also use an activity-based costing system, a system which divides the estimated overhead into multiple cost pools, all with their own activity base. This is something we'll explore in a future video. Thanks so much for watching.